everybody, this is Andrew Greer again with CCM Magazine, and we are here with our uh, cover fellas, cover boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the month, this is Matt Thiessen, of course, and Matt Hoops for Reliant K. So thanks, guys, for... Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we had so much fun with you guys, with John Foreman, of course, Switchfoot, but getting to focus on you guys. Okay, so the word that keeps coming up in reference to the new record, Air for Free, or at least what I'm seeing through reading and following you guys, is adventure. So kind of the question is, how do you use your music to embody adventure, do you? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, one thing, uh, and actually we were just joking earlier about how I don't really get that involved in the social media. I don't, you know, I'm not just attacking it all the time. And I think that's part of our adventure in life is, is finding things to do that, you know, uh, get you out of the house and get you off the grid a little bit or maybe disconnected from the devices a little bit and uh, I like to go for a run every day you know somewhere between 7 to 13 miles and it's just no phone you know and and uh, it's an adventure every day like some days I'll see a guy trying to get across the street in a wheelchair and he needs a little help so I'll go help him out or you know just uh, I'll meet different people or I'll go into a coffee shop and just get a glass of water and be sweaty and gross and like, I'm sorry I'm not buying anything, but thanks for the free <laughs> water. And it's an adventure. Um, and all the songs on this album were kind of trying to approach happiness in life from a very organic place. There's a lot of animals and mm -hmm. just about, um, I don't know how I'm, I'm a 35 year old man and uh, just the, the growing, like, the, the growing that I've been trying to do and maturing as a person. Um, and those are all just the adventures of, of life, I guess, and what we've been trying to do. Uh, I'm sure you can add something to that. Uh, yeah, that word just kind of kept coming up to me as a theme. Uh, there's actually an entire group of songs on our record that I feel like, they, they just feel like an adventure to me. It feels like not, not only a journey, but uh, maybe it's something that is bold, that is pushing us out of where we've been. Maybe it's something that is important but uh kind of about our story about our what we're going through uh and so even when i was kind of grouping the songs together there was one section that i i just called like these are the adventure songs like that's the theme so like <laughs> you know like one section was like these are our rock songs these are our uh important songs was one of them uh these and these songs they just felt like adventure to me so that was just kind of a word that kind of kept recurring and then uh even when we did uh, photos for the record uh, we just called this guy Josh who was a friend of a friend and had him come up and we knew that he knew where all the cool spots were so we had him come up and uh, just kind of show us uh, it just felt like this adventure it just yeah. it, it feel like it added a visual to the music that was already there and it just kind of all felt like connected and together and well I uh, I think of kind of your history as a band and kind of your fame, infamous for this tongue-in-cheek, you know, which is, it, I, so I don't think people would, when they hear adventure, I think there's already this kind of adventuresome, even with your language, with the, with the ability with uh, lyric and verse to be able to kind of explore uh, what you want to say in unique ways. But what I've noticed with your music is that tongue-in-cheek is often something used as sarcasm, as something to bite, something a bit caustic, maybe even critical of others, and yet you guys use it to kind of come back uh, inward, to point the finger to yourself first, to say, okay, what's going on with me before opining about everyone else. Is that true, and and why? Well, um, you know, it, it's not good to necessarily be preachy in songs. It's not good to say, point the finger and say, you ought to do this and you ought to do that. So I guess a way to, to kind of do that for yourself is to say, you know, I could be better at this, and uh, man, I made a mistake, or and there's all that. And then when a listener relates to the song, um, they identify with you then all of a sudden it becomes this, this unified sort of thing. And um, to do it with the tongue in cheek, it's, it's I don't know, I, puns have always just been kind of an easier way to like, hey, it's a joke, so it must be a lyric, you know, we, we gotta use it. Um, <laughs> it's like, hey, we're done, we got all the jokes we need. But mm -hmm. uh, it's also, I don't know, it's fun to, to put a little wink in, in, your, in your music. And um, it's cool to do it in a, in a way that can be almost, you know, taken seriously, as you say, like there's there's some like 
truth and, and realness to it. And then at the same time, there's like this playfully sunshiny element to it too, where hopefully the audience sees that we don't take ourselves too seriously. Yeah. Well, I think that adds to, we were talking about this right before, to kind of your listener love. You know, like I feel like, uh, though I don't know the minds and, and the thoughts of all your listeners, it feels like they're very connected to you guys. It feels like you guys are very connected to them. And I'm, I'm wondering if this isn't one way that, maybe not intentionally but or consciously, but you are taking care of your listeners. And you're saying, hey, we are the same, right? Yeah. I mean... Uh, Matt and I grew up just being fans of all these bands and we'd go around to all the shows and we'd get to meet these bands because they weren't in this holier than thou hierarchy of fame or something and that's uh, you know we wanted to as a band we wanted to be like oh we're friends with all the kids that are watching the show and we're mm -hmm. all on the same playing field and um, we all probably have things in common and uh and it's just, a, yeah, it's supposed to be about, you know, well, be having a, a love between brothers and sisters. And I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I think that that's always been something that we've been able to do is connect uh, not only through our music, but through just even our personality, the way we come across, the way we speak to people. Um, I think that's always been a part of who we are, but also the identity of our band. Uh, and I think, I, I, I feel happy about that i feel like you know that's that's a good thing and and you know it's life is so complex to come in and be negative and to come in and be uh derogatory or like it, you know you just never know what people are going through and uh i think this these little glimmers of positivity are are like very important to us in music and uh something we've always kind of tried to strive for well, and this talks about, uh, this is get, hitting on something which we talked about a little bit earlier too with John about sharing our story. And I, I wanted, this is a quote of yours that I found on social media. It must be oh my. with, uh, with uh, Tyson's confession. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to so, really. Okay, so I'm out of hoops. Here you go. See if this feels like you. Um, there, you were, now you're talking, it was a picture of an old piano and with all this character, which is great. He said, there is something about the imperfection of an old instrument that not only gives it character, but tells a story and connects us to its past. And I was kind of thinking, is that not true of us? Especially as we age and as we learn and as we have these experiences and as we screw up and as we achieve and all this, is it not kind of like... We begin to become flawed sometimes physically. We, we begin to break down a little bit, mm -hmm. but also emotionally and mentally. And in that breakdown, there seems to be a lot that connects us to each other. Well, yeah, I think in, in some ways what I was trying to say is it's almost like this thing has a soul to it, but we are souls. You know, like people, like we, we have souls. We are very complex and very much... Uh, also a product of our experiences and things that we've gone through and uh, been through and you know I think as, as a musician there's something to an old instrument you like to think of the songs that have been played on it or the um, just everything it's, it's gone through and and you know there is something special about picking up an instrument and feeling connected to it uh, mm -hmm. I feel that as a guitar player mainly but I felt like in the piano, I could hear it, and I could hear Matt playing differently. I could see him playing it mm. differently, and that felt important to me. I feel like I can hear it on the recording, you know? I can hear it as, as a part of this piece of music that we just made, and I think in some ways it helped guide our path, you know? How old was that piano, do you remember? It was it was early 1900s, I don't okay. know exactly. And basically we, we rented this Airbnb out in, on a dairy farm and they had this piano in there and uh, the, the woman who owned the place, it was like her you know, great-grandmother's or something, and they, a lot of hymns were played on it and it was pretty pitchy, but we got it tuned up and, and it's on, you know, it's how the record was created. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very piano-heavy record, so. Think about all the years that instrument's been telling stories. Yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully... You know, some of that trickled its way through, you know, mm -hmm. some of those hymns or something, you know, just, it's cool. Yeah, and ultimately, you know, the piano is not the important part. The song is the important part, the the emotion, the feeling, the that, but it's it's cool that the, the piano is 
in itself as a, an animate mm-hmm. object is a part of the story. You know, I think that's kind of beautiful to think about.